All right, guys, it is Saturday. It's track day. This is actually going to be a test and tune day um, in preparation for next week's grudge race. And then two weeks, there's going to be a streetcar, outlaw streetcar or something or other race at Ennis. And it's going to be quarter mile. So, you know, Bob likes to get out there and stretch his legs out. And we will definitely be there for that. Um, this week's changes, we have put in a new transmission band. We went to the high energy narrow band for the power glide instead of the wide band Kevlar material. Um, supposedly the Kevlar bands are known for burning up rather easily. Um, we also changed the valve body um, pressure regulator spring. Um, it was only seeing about 210 pounds of line pressure. We went to the high pressure spring, uh, which seems to have netted somewhere in the 250 range, 260. Uh, not that we needed the line pressure like it was slipping or anything, but we needed converter charge pressure uh, to go up because the car would flash to about 7,300 RPMs off the trans brake, leaving at only 4,300. Um, that in itself really isn't good, bad, or indifferent, um, but there is probably room for improvement there. So we got the charge pressure up. Right now it's probably too high, and we're going to have to install a bleed line on it at some point in time, probably before the next race. So uh, enough of all the rambling. Let us get to the track and see how it goes. Okay, so we are officially here at the track. Uh, as you can see, there is nobody here yet. Well, I'm um, somebody, but he's not claiming. Yeah, Brian, Brian's friend. here. Brian's okay. here. That does count for something. Anyways, um, there's not a whole lot of people here yet, and I kind of like that because we'll probably get several runs in and uh, be able to go home at a reasonable time. Brian is actually going to drive the car off the trailer. Um, he has to get used to this sooner or later because his car will be running soon. So, um, oh, look at this. We got some... Street cars rolling in here. Camaro coming in with a parachute on it. He don't want those problems. Anyways, uh, I think we're just about ready to go. This is gonna be fun. Please don't film this. Okay. <laughs> steering wheel first. Take note of where the big spline on the steering shaft is. This guy. Yeah. So your wheels are going to be turned to the left. Just a b that big spline is in the center of that. More left. There you go. All right. First, second switch on up there. Crank it until it starts. got used to the fact you got to back it up and give it a lot of room to turn. Oh, look at this. I was just getting the camera out to show you guys how sticky the track was and Brian bust his ass on the track. <laughs> I just told him, I just told him to tie his shoes really tight and make sure they're good before you walk. Look at this. Look at the marks. You can't put your feet flat on the track because it's just, it's just too much. Way to go, cheeseburger. You made him lose. Bro, we haven't even started yet. 
That is awesome. Okay, as you can see by that last clip, things did not go as planned at the test and tune. So, the short explanation is assembly error building the power glide by yours truly. Um, that's the only thing I can figure out, and I'll explain quickly what happened. So, I boosted the car up on the trans brake here in the garage a few times and when we got to the track um, after the clip of Brian unloading the car off the trailer we took the car down the return road and back I boosted it up once let go of the trans brake for and stayed in the gas for probably a, a second or two no, nothing crazy by any means and everything was fine from that point um, we drove the car around and put it in the staging lanes and, and got ready to make a pass and what you saw is the result of that. So, um, the first time I got on the gas in the lights, it boosted up quick, no problems. Um, but when I went to hit the bump button, I could feel it shaking the car, but the car wasn't moving. And you can see it in the video, the car, the tire shakes like this and the car doesn't move. And then I let go of the trans brake and roll into the light and I hit it again and when I hit the bump button this time I could feel it moving the car backwards okay so that tells me right away that the band has failed um, in some form or fashion the band has failed now this is a power glide so that's that's why it's like that so um, for those of you who don't know when the car is in low gear the band is applied when you shift into second gear the band releases when you're on the trans brake the band is applied and reverses on so it's locked into low gear and reverse at the same time so by the car backing up when I'm on the trans brake that tells me that the band is not applying under any circumstances not even a little bit usually when you burn the band up the car won't move in reverse but it will not go in low this one was 100% reverse so what I found was these two pieces laying in the transmission pan and for those of us who don't know what that is, those are the, the cleats that grab the band and, and pinch the band with the servo applying on one side. And the other side is <clears throat> the adjuster. Um, this guy right here is pushing on it. Um, so that's when you hear somebody say adjust the band four turns. That's essentially running this screw all the way in until it bottoms out and then backing it out four turns and that's the adjustment for the band. So the only thing I can think of why those two pieces fell out and there are no broken parts in the transmission. There's no junk in the fluid. There was nothing. It was perfectly clean. Um, the only thing that makes any sense is when I adjusted the band, I did one of two things. I screwed the adjuster in and backed it out more than four turns or the band was not sitting square on the drum and I adjusted it and backed it out four turns and it was really the equivalent of you know six turns or seven turns or something like that and that gave it room for these pieces to fall out and of course the band completely relaxes and you have no low gear so 
I uh, took the valve body over to Mike's place, took it all apart, cleaned it out, make sure that there's nothing goofy going on there. And again, for those of us who don't know, a power glide valve body is very simple. There, in this case, there's no check balls. There's only two moving parts in it, and I'll show you real quick what that is. Right in here is the pressure relief valve. And then, I turned it the wrong way. Or did I? No, I'm sorry, I had it right. This, which isn't sticking out, is the uh, manual valve, okay? So, they're actually supposed to stick out the other side. So the manual valve um, is what your shifter is attached to. So whenever you put it in park or whatever, it moves in and out like this. And last but not least, the um, trans brake valve. Um, and that's it. That's just, that's how it works. So, and I may be putting that in there backwards. No, that's right. So anyways, um, that's all that is inside of a power glide valve body. There's no check balls, no moving parts, no nothing crazy. So that can't be screwed up. This is plainly a mechanical problem. And hopefully it's uh, soon to be fixed. So I'm going to get back under the car and put it back together. And we're going to test it out real quick. Oh, one other thing I didn't cover on that is when I put the uh, transmission back together at Mike's place, I put a, a higher pressure valve body uh, uh, PR spring in it. And the reason why I did that is because this thing was seeing consistent 210 pounds of line pressure going down the track. And that's a little light. And I was after a higher line pressure and a little bit more charge pressure on the converter side. And I think I covered that in the other video. Um, the, the charge pressure was a little low. So when the car leaves the line at 4,300, the converter flashes to 7,300 and that's a little bit too much for this thing. And by raising the charge pressure, some of that 7,300 will come down hopefully to 6,500 or so. And that's kind of how Chris's transmission acted. And that's what I'm after. So when I put the high pressure spring in it, it sits on top of the PR valve and then there's a cup that goes around the spring and then the, the booster uh, valve sits below that and what I did was I put the cup on the spring upside down which essentially makes the spring even tighter. What happened there was the pressure when I first started the car for the first time with the new transmission and I think I said it in the last video the pressure went up to like 300 pounds uh, it pegged the gauge or it pegged the sensor and no telling how high it went with it at 2500 rpm so anyways um taking it apart and back together a couple times i put ended up with the high pressure spring back in it and the cup flipped around like it's supposed to be and the pressure was right and all that jazz initially i had thought that the high pressure bent the adjuster screw um probable but not likely and when i pulled it out of the car it was obvious it's not bent so Okay, we got the transmission back together, and I'm sitting in the car, obviously. Um, I'm going to test it out real quick. I got fluid in it, um, and I got the laptop hooked up, so we'll be able to check out the charge pressure and the line pressure and things as I go through the gears. Um, yeah, so it's no better time than the present. Let's check it out and see what it does. Fire it up real quick. Hopefully you can hear me after this thing's running. Watch the drive shaft speed right 
Okay, hopefully you heard all my talking in there, but looks like everything works pretty good, um, which I expected it to. It was fine before. I really think that there was some kind of assembly error on my part um, as far as getting the band seated correctly before I adjusted it. So uh, I think we'll call that good. Um, we got a couple more videos coming up this week. Got some new waste gates in. Hopefully get this boost control problem uh, handled. And uh, if time permits, we'll go over some of the data logs from the last two weeks at the track. I uh, had a lot of questions in regards to that stuff. So uh, I guess we're back in business. Okay, so hopefully you can see the information on the screen in the laptop in that last clip. The, the lighting's kind of weird in there. Uh, or that light is kind of weird on the camera for whatever reason. Um, all it's showing is pretty much that the the line pressure is good now. The charge pressure is good. Uh, we have first gear or we have low gear. Um, that was just a weird deal. I've, I've never had that kind of problem before. But I knew exactly what it was when it happened for some reason. Um, but we're in business. We're back in business, I should say. So this week, we're going to get the wastegates put on the car, the new wastegates put on the car. Uh, hopefully get the boost control problem in order. Uh, maybe do something with the traction control um, this upcoming race, and at the very least, just turn it on and plot a graph so we have some data to go by. Um, and all that kind of good stuff. It may be getting a little bit uh, ambitious, but I guess we'll see how this week turns out, uh, specifically uh, in regards to weather too, cause that kind of could throw us for a loop. Anyways, um, I don't know. It, it, the car's back together. We're running. We're ready to go racing again. Hopefully these problems are behind us cause it's getting old pulling the transmission pan off and getting soaked in transmission fluid. But I digress. Anyways, thanks everybody for stopping by. I sure do appreciate it. That's the end of the video. Um, it was a rocky weekend. Let me tell you. So uh, if you haven't, please do hit subscribe, give it a thumbs up. We'll see you in the next video. Also, be sure to check us out on Instagram. I post pictures and stuff there uh, throughout the week. So anyways, thanks guys.